I have the Lord in my life, I have the best. And it's not how people say, see, being saved and being filled with the Holy Spirit, we're not measured by what the world measures success. We're not measured by that. We're measured by how we walk before God. That's what we're measured by. And so being saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, listen, I have the best of, I have the best of both worlds. I have everything I need in me. And I look forward to 2024 because 2023 was a better year for us. But 2024 is going to even be a better year for us. Go before everyone this beautiful January the 1st, 2024. Uh, we thank God for allowing us to see another year. We don't take for granted. We appreciate it. We love the Lord. Uh, if you see, you look, I have on my Air Force shirt, uh, one of them. Uh, thank God for the United States Air Force. Uh, I'm a retired Air Force member. I thank God for it. I, I served 21 years, six months, 19 days in the United States Air Force, the world's greatest Air Force. It's the world's greatest Air Force. 2023 was a banner year for some, but a very troubled year for others. As the calendar slipped over to 2024, there's a new opportunity for improvement, for doing things better and doing things smarter. Many people make New Year's resolutions. I'm all fine, I'm all good for that, thank the Lord. Uh, resolution is people resolve in their mind and in their heart and their spirit that they're going to do something differently this year than they did last year. Whether they say, well, I'm going to go to the gym more, or I'm going to join a book club, or I'm going to save more money, or I'm going to take some trips, or whatever they resolve to want to do in their heart and their spirit, they say, and this is what I plan for this upcoming year. And what they're actually doing, I don't even think they realize it, all they're doing is hitting the reset button on previous decisions and choices they made the previous year because they want to see a better outcome. And that's great. We should want to have better results and better outcomes of the things we engage in. So it says here, many people make New Year's resolutions, they set new disciplines, and they create new, do new goals. They set new disciplines and they create new goals. While we're working to improve the intellectual man and our physical man, let us not neglect our spiritual man, our inner self. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, and this means male or female, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. If I have the Lord in my life, I have the best. And it's not how people say, see, being saved and being filled with the Holy Spirit, we're not measured by what the world measures success. We're not measured by that. We're measured by how we walk before God. That's what we're measured by. And so being saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, listen, I have the best of, I have the best of both worlds. I have everything I need in me. And I look forward to 2024 because 2023 was a better year for us. But 2024 is going to even be a better year for us. And guess what? It's not predicated on who is the White House. It's not predicated on who is the Senate or the Congress. It's not predicated about who's the judge. It's not predicated on how much I make. It's not predicated on how much property I own. No, it's based on the fact that I know that I am his. And guess what? He is mine. The new self in Christ created to be, God, be like God in true righteousness and holiness is completely different. Being saved is completely different than not being saved. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is completely different than not being filled with the Holy Spirit. I know people, they, they say they're Christian and they say this, that, and, 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 they're willing to walk away from their marriages and tear up their families and do all kind of stuff. They sleep around and they have children through fornication. They don't, they don't ever look at getting married. They, they want to get married after they had two, three, four kids. I'm talking about men and women. But then they say, oh, oh, I love God. I feel good. No, 
No, let's call it for what it is. The Bible calls it a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. In Romans chapter 10, it talks about, uh, Israel said, this is desire for them that they might be saved. He said, but they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And you have people out there that have a form of godliness. In other words, they have the trimmings of looking and being godly, but they don't actually have the qualities of being godly. Hit the reset button. Hit the reset button. One thing about God is He's not requiring us to go from not being saved to a mature Christian overnight. He knows that life is going to happen. Uh, he knows sometimes we're going to try to be successful, but we're going to fail. And what will end up happening is, as you become more and more in love with God and more and more trying to please God, your successes will far outweigh your failures, and then God will allow the blessings to hap happen as a result of the successes. Amen. Because what we'll end up doing, and, and the Bible clearly says how, we, how things happen. It says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever a man sowed, that shall he also reap. And so the law of sowing and reaping happens. So before I get saved and, and when I'm a sinner, I sow sinful things. I sow ungodliness. And so when my harvest come in, what's going to come in? An ungodly harvest and sinful harvest. But when I, was saved, when I get saved, I become transformed. I become a new creature in Christ. Then I start sowing things of the kingdom. I start sowing things of Jesus Christ. And so my heart, I start sowing the love. Before I may not have sowed the love before I wasn't saved. I start sowing the peace. I start sowing the joy. I start, I, start, I start sowing the meekness and the temperance. I start sowing the patience. I start sowing these things. And so when things happen, I start sowing the mercy and the compassion. So when I need mercy, guess what happened? I planted mercy. When I need compassion, I planted compassion. It means that things change and they change at a pace that's conducive to our faith. I can't grow faster than what I believe. Amen. I know we see some people folk took off running like it's a sprint. That's fine. If that's what they believe, they, they believe. But I'm going to share this with you. You can take off fast. But what you, what you don't understand is it's a marathon. Amen. Because what God is requiring us to do, it takes our whole lifetime to do. Christ's death and resurrection ushered in a foretaste of an entirely new world still to come. And this is important because even God it's going to hit the reset on what we know the modern world is today. Eventually, everything in creation will be made new. All those things that we know and are accustomed to will be made new. God will hit the reset button on his creation during the millennial dispensation. Now, there's... Seven dispensations. There's a millennial dispensation. We're in the church dispensation. Then you got the millennial dispensation after the church. After the church is ratcheted up out of here. Well, during the millennial dispensation, there's going to be new heavens and new earth. In Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 19, and verses 24 through 25, God's going to hit the reset button on his entire creation. And look what God says. Isaiah 65, verse 17 says, For, behold, I create new heavens, and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come to mind. There's going to be a point in the new millennium, in the millennium, in the millennium dispensation. There's going to be a point where things are going to be created, and we won't even have a memory of what things are on earth like right now. Isaiah 65 verse 18 says, "But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing, and her people a joy." And he keeps letting us know there's going to be a connection between him and the Jews in the millennium. But the church is going to be gone. And it goes on and says, new heaven and new earth. And then it's verse 19. Isaiah 65 verse 19 says, And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall, be, shall no more be heard in her. 
nor the voice of crying. Isaiah chapter 65, verse number 24. Look what it says here. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. This is what God's saying. And he's, he sent this message through his prophet to his people saying, listen, before they even call on me, I'm going to already have the answer there for them. Look what it says here. He says, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And then verse 25 says, the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. E oh. Even the nature of animals as we know, predator, there's no be no predator and prey in the millennial period, in the millennial dispensation. And God is saying, I'm going to hit the reset button and all that distortion going to go away. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. They're going to eat the same thing. And look what it says, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And the dust shall be the serpent's meal. Even God knows when there's time to make a change, we turn the page. We make the change and we turn the page. You hit the reset button. Hit the reset button in 2024.